Yeah, Tamash, uh, I think we can start because it's already 10 minutes. Okay, so let's start. I'm Tamash yeah. Nehart, um, former student East, and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, vehicle engineering in former student. So it's going to be some kind of uh, some kind of combination of project management and, and engineering. During the, the presentation, first I'm going to introduce myself, then first I will talk about what is the goal of former student, then I'm going to talk about, as I said, the combination of project management and engineering, how it should be performed in the beginning of the season, how do you track it during the season, and how do you evaluate your project season in the end I will summarize uh, what we what I've talked about and uh, I will set up some points what I suggest to avoid during the season and uh, even during the presentation or after it uh, you can ask questions if you feel like and it's okay if we are interactive it's not just a one-man show but uh, we can discuss and we can talk about things probably it's, it's better than just me talking about one thing. So first about myself, I'm Tamás Lénárt, I'm from Hungary, and I started my studies in 2010 in the Technical University of Budapest. First I had uh, mechatronics in bachelor's and mechanical engineering modeling then in master course. And uh, in 2012, two years after I, I joined the university, I uh, went to the garage of the former student team of my university with my friend and we joined the team. This was the time when uh, BME Formula Racing team, the team of our, of our, uh, of our university was in its last combustion car. And uh, we, that was the flagship of our project. That was the one that, that we put the most effort to it. Although I just joined at the end of the project when we were in the testing phase and we were preparing for the competitions. And uh, during this year, it was the combustion car which was in focus. But besides that, we already developed uh, electric vehicles. And in 2013, when I, was, uh, in, when I was also included in the engineering and the design process of the car, so I was part in the project from the very beginning, that was the time when we had... Uh, the first monocoque chassis with electric drive and uh, that was a big step forward for us when we when we instead of having two different cars we just had one car and put all the effort on that car and uh, combined the electric drivetrain and the monocoque chassis together in this project what i did was mostly those things that the others were not that interested in because everybody wants to be in wants to be in carbon composite development or in aerodynamic simulations and these fancy fields, but the fields like uh, low voltage electronic design and wire harness design and the packaging of these electronic devices is something that uh, that's not that popular. And I ended up doing these, and I learned about this. I was part of the team until 2014. This was the time when we had this, this car that I talked about. And in 2014, we further developed it and refined it and uh, raced with it. At the end of 2014, I left the team. And from 2015, I already changed the side and became a design judge. And I had my first uh, judging experience in former student Hungary 2015. In 2016, uh, we started the former student East competition and from the very beginning I'm uh, responsible for the engineering design event. So I'm the one who is, uh, who is recruiting the judges and assemble the judging teams, collect the doc documents from the teams and distribute it to the judges, uh, inform them about the process, prepare them. And in the end, when they are done with the, the judging, I am the one collecting the results and uh, doing the administrative work. Regarding this, I do it since 2016 and I continue to do this uh, as of now in former student East. Besides former student, uh, in the last years of, uh, of my education, 
once I left the Formula student team, but I was still in the master course uh, with some uh, team members, my former team members, we joined the project called Ember One project. This was a development project of an electrical vehicle platform. This was going for roughly two years. And once we finished with this, I joined a, a bus company called Icarus. Uh, it might be familiar for you because back in the back in the times, back in the days in the from the 60s onward until the 90s, this was the the flagship bus development company of uh, of the Eastern Bloc. So the 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 buses of the Icarus was running all over the Soviet Union and uh, the Warsaw Pact countries, even in Turkey and in Iran and. Uh, I left this company in uh, 2018 and I joined the Rimac Automobili in Croatia, Zagreb. And this is where I am until now and I'm still continue to be there. I'm working in vehicle engineering and I still do the things that I did in former student in the very beginning. Uh, enclosure design of, uh, of low voltage components, enclosure design of electrical components, packaging them in the car, and mostly the most important stuff is the wire harness design that is the the most complex job of this uh, development i'm working in vehicle engineering we are working on the c2 vehicle you might be familiar with it uh, and we work on other other cars which are built on the same rolling chassis and that's it from about me what is the goal of former student? I would like to talk about this because I think it's often, often misunderstood. Uh, because former student is not equal to motorsport, but former student is equal to education. The important difference is that in formula, in motorsport, the primary product that we are working on is the race car, which in the end will race on the track. While in former students, the most important output, the primary product of the project is the well-educated engineers who gather important practical experience and in a real life project. And they are much more, much more equipped for real life uh, development situations. They also have the, the academic, uh, academic studies, but besides that a field experience. And this is the, the primary primary aim of former student to educate the, the students and make them better engineers. And as a byproduct of this process, we also have nice racing cars going around the tracks and achieving excellent results. How does a season start? First, uh, when you start a season, you have to evaluate what happened in the previous season. Uh, what were your goals? Did you manage to achieve your goals? If yes, that's good. If you not, then why not? Uh, what was which worked throughout the previous season? What is what is what can be improved? What is the, the information? What is the knowledge that the team members gathered throughout the season? You have to structure it and you have to make it ready to be used in the next season. Throughout uh, when a season starts. Uh, the, the rules are getting published. Late in, lately, it's the former student Germany, which is uh, publishing their own rules. And uh, most of the other former student competitions are adopting these rules. And uh, we, you have to get familiar, familiar with these rules because they are changing every year. Although these changes as of now are not that big, but it has to be checked and maybe in the future, they're going to be more drastical because we identified that we slowly reach the point with this current set of rules when the best teams are already converged and they are not changing too much on their cars because they already reach the optimum level with the design. So there is not much room for improvement for them. So it would, good, it would be good to... to to change the rules a bit so they have to do the whole process from the beginning and uh, optimize the car again so because as i said this is the the goal of formula student not to have the perfect car but to give the opportunity for the students to learn and to to go through the development process and see how the 
the project goes from the first sketches, the first simulations, until the final product when the car is going around the track. Uh, when you start the season, set up uh, goals for yourself. And it's, it, must, it is very important that these goals should be not subjective, but objective, clearly defined and measurable goals. So it's not like that, that we would like to perform well in the competition or we would like to be the first of a certain competition because this is not, a, for example, the result in a competition or your position is influenced by other teams as well. And this is something in the project that you cannot really influence. What you can influence in the project is that what is the amount of points in the competition that you wanna achieve. And uh, during the, the season, when you are making you have to make decisions. You have to make these decisions in an objective way. And you have to pick, have to go into the direction which will uh, give you to, which will lead you to the goal that you set for yourself. Later in the presentation, I'm gonna show a, a decision matrix, which is a very, very simple and easy tool for this decision making. Probably most of you already know it, but I'm gonna talk about it a bit. So the high level goals on the vehicle or team level, uh, the, you, can this, you can set up this goal based on optimization. And most of the teams optimize for the competition points. As I said, this is something objective. It's a certain number between zero and 1,000 and uh, and you can clearly measure it at the end of the season if you achieve that level that you expected or not. If you did not, then what was the reason why you didn't achieve it and how you should make, how you should set your goals for the next year to get closer to the goal that you set for yourself. How can you determine what is the points that you can achieve in a given season in order than given competition? You can check uh, in case of statics, you can check uh, what was the, the results in the previous year and what, uh, what was the feedback that you got from the, the judges. You can check, okay, in the design event, we managed to give 80 points. The judges give us the feedback to improve in certain fields. And if we improve, if we make this, we expect ourselves to increase our points score in the design event by 10 points. And you can do this for the design, the cost and manufacturing, and for the business event. And this way you can set up the, the goal that you, that you think is realistic for the statics. And in the, in the dynamic events, you can use lap time simulation. There are off-the-shelf solutions for this, for example, uh, Optimum Lab, which is a really straightforward and, and easy to use software for these purposes. But you can also develop your own your own uh, lap time simulation. A lot of teams are using IPG car maker, but you can go hardcore and make your own lap time simulation in, uh, in MATLAB or anything. Uh, in these lap time simulations, you are uh, setting, you, are, you can play with different parameters of the vehicle, different, uh, what is the mass of the vehicle? What is the, the grip coefficient? What is the, the drag of the car, what is the, the downforce that the car can generate, and you can influence these, uh, these parameters, you can change these parameters, and uh, you can evaluate the results based on the lap time simulation, that which are the set of parameters which gives you the, the best overall results. Maybe you have to make a trade-off that our car will be slightly, slightly slower top speed, and in the acceleration, we're not gonna perform that well, but as a result, we're gonna be much better in cornering and much more agile in the, in the lower RPM range of the car. So we expect ourselves to perform very well in the autocross and for example, in the efficiency. And you have to find those set of parameters that gives you the best overall results in the, in the competition. 
once you have these uh, optimal results of optimum, optimal value of these parameters, you can perform a sensitivity analysis, which will tell you that the modification of these parameters, how does it affect the, the overall results. Let me show you an example of this. In this slide, you can see the, a certain set of parameters that the team set for themselves. They managed to, during the optimization process, they found that they achieved the best results with a certain wheelbase, certain track width, a certain mass, and a certain other parameters of the car. It's really tricky to to set these up and there is a little bit of guessing in this one. For example, in the very beginning of the project, you can set, okay, we think that it's realistic to, to reach the downforce coefficient of five and the drag coefficient of, of uh, 1.8. Of course, in the simulation, if you have the, the highest amount of downforce and the lowest amount of uh, drag, you're gonna achieve the best results, but you know, that you cannot make, car, cannot make an aerodynamic package, uh, which will give you an excellent, uh, an infinite amount of, uh, of downforce with uh, zero amount of drag, because this is not realistic. So you have to be smart to set these up. You, you have to have experience from the previous years that, okay, previous year we managed to achieve a, a drag coefficient of uh, one of two, with the downforce coefficient of 4.5. So it's realistic to increase the, the, the downforce with a certain amount, but as a trade-off, the drag will increase as well. So you have to be, you have to be quite smart in these, in these parameters because you have to, have to estimate the, the effect of these parameters on each other. And what can give you the, the information for this is the experience from the previous years. After you are done with the, you find the optimal value, you perform the sensitivity analysis. You can see it on the left side. You can see that the team managed to find out that they, if they increase the, the lift coefficient with 0 0.1, that will give them 3.1 points in the overall score. But if at the same time they increase the drag with 0 0.1, that will result in a minus 0 0.62 points. So if you, you can see that, okay, if the aerodynamic guys find out that we can increase the lift with a certain value, but as a trade-off, we're gonna increase the drag as well with another certain value, you can check in the sensitivity analysis that is it, does it worth to make the, the change and increase the drag with the trade-off of increasing, increasing the lift with the trade-off of increasing the drag or not. Will it improve the, the total points in the, the, the max, will it improve the, the number of points achieved in the competition or not? And this is, this is what you should, your decision should be based on. If the decision, which is the option, which is uh, serving the overall goal better and which is the one which is not serving it. This is the, the time when the decision matrix can come to the, to the game. Uh, here is an example. I just took it from the internet. It shows uh, shows how the different candidates are compared to each other. But in our case, obviously, it's not candidates, but uh, different options of development. So you can see that uh, in the horizontal top top uh, top of the the table, you can see the different perspectives. In our case, this can be the different parameters of the sensitivity analysis and the weights each of the parameters have a certain amount of weight in this case this could be the sensitivity and the result of the sensitivity analysis that you can see that the most important is the grip coefficient and uh, the drag and the efficiency of the car and the additional mass is uh, is quite disadvantageous for the points too. So you can take these, uh, these parameters and weights from this sensitivity analysis and check that the certain options in the design uh, will improve that parameter or, uh, or make it worse. 
and you can score them based on the scale. And in the end, when you have these scores for each option and you have the weights, you multiply the, the, the scale value with the, with, the, with the weight. And this is what you can see in the bottom that you go through, multiply the weight and the, and the scores. And in the end, you summarize the, the points for each option and the option which uh, gives you the best result, the highest number of points, will, uh, will be the way that you have to go. And this will be the option which help you to, to go into the goal that you set for yourself in the beginning of the season. Once you, once you set up your goals for yourself, uh, the overall goals, these goals must be derived to a lower level to the sub-team level, uh, to the different design areas of the car. And uh, you have to be very careful with this because you have to make sure that the, the different, different guys who are working in different fields of the car in different sub-teams, they, they have to, they don't need, they, they cannot go into the direction that they just think that is the best because maybe they don't see the, 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 the big picture. And coordination is, is very, very important in this one to actually set up that, okay, what do we have to do in the suspension design, in the aerodynamics design? What will be the way to go to achieve the, the best results that we set for ourselves? And each sub-team has to ask this question for themselves, that what can we do? Uh, to achieve this overall goal. What is our role in this one? And uh, what can help you in this is the, is the V model. Uh, probably this is familiar for you as well. It's, it's very common to, very common experience and, and lot of, in a lot of projects they are using this. Uh, it's originally coming from software development, but lately it's uh, pretty widespread in, in any kind of project. So as I said, first you set up the, the overall goals, then you derive from this overall goal that what is your department or, or sub-team goals that you have to achieve. Then you do the, do the development. And once you, you design the part, you can check, okay, does this part fulfill that uh, goal that we set for ourselves? If the answer is yes, then okay, you can continue. If the answer is not, then you have to further refine the, the product and go over and over and over. And uh, you should do it until you, you reach to the point where it contributes the, to the goal the best way. Of course, uh, if it turns out during the project that those, uh, for example, in aerodynamics, that those uh, lift coefficient and drag coefficient that we set for ourselves in the beginning of the year is not achievable because of it's not possible to reach it, then you can refine your, your original lap time simulation, put back the, the values that you managed to achieve based on the simulation, and you can play around again and see what are the different, uh, what is the set of parameters in aerodynamics, which will give you the best overall results. So you, you can go back to this, uh, you can go back to this, uh, lifetime simulation over the year again and again and check if the, the way that you went is uh, giving you the best results or not. Uh, once you are done with the part design, you can, uh, you, the parts are going to manufacturing and you put the, the assemblies together, then you can perform tests on these subsystems. You can check the, the kinematics of the, of the suspension, how it works you can validate the, the aerodynamic package if, the, if the, the lift and the drag generated by the wing is really the, the value that you achieved in the, in the simulation as well. It's really important to, to compare the simulations to the, to the real measurements because most of the time there are differences. And even in the simulations, there are a lot of parameters that you have to change. And in the beginning, it's hard to set up these values, but over the time, as you have experience, as you went through the project over and over and over, you're gonna see that, okay, 
last year we went in this direction. It was not good because it ended up with this result. So, okay, we have to do this year in a bit different way to go into the direction that we, that we want to go. And uh, if you follow this V model, you can test the different, uh, different systems and parts during the year. So you can detect, okay, if, the, if this part is not performing in the way that we would like it to perform, probably the subsystem won't perform in the way, which means that the whole system, the whole car won't achieve the results that we expected. Then in December, December when you are in the, the part design, you can check, okay, why is it not reaching the, the goal that we wanted? Is it possible to change in a way to, to reach it or we have to revise the goal that we set for ourselves? It's really important to do these, uh, to do these, uh, these uh, checks for yourself and not just blindly go towards the summer and see if the, the results will come or not. You, can, you, have, to you have to take this, uh, this gate throughout the year to check, okay, we planned that we're gonna be here, we're gonna have this result and this performance, do we have it or not? As I, this is basically about the things that I mentioned. So in the beginning of the, of the season, you have to prepare yourself a detailed time plan and resources. You have to plan with your resources, financially or workload wise that, okay, the students will not be available in December because they have to focus on their exams. You have to include this kind of, you can, you can this kind of problems, this, this kind of uh, set of uh, set of environment in your planning. You also have to plan for manufacturing. Okay, we expect that the company which will manufacture us the the upright will be only available in February. This is the time when they are not busy with some different projects. So we have to, f have to finish with the upright design by January and send it to them on February so that they can manufacture it. Uh, since, former, since we are a former student, these are uh, prototype projects and uh, it is performed by students who are doing it probably for the first time. So you have to, be, you have to prepare certain amount of buffers in the plan because things can go wrong and things not just, they not just can go wrong, they will go wrong. So you have to prepare your plans according to that, that uh, you try to plan with these things, uh, what can go wrong and what do we do if it goes wrong and make a plan which is ready to adapt to the, to the changing situation. I think this year in 2020 is a perfect example that things are not going in a way that it was expected and what must be done. It's really important, uh, the coordination. I, I cannot emphasize it enough. Uh, just imagine to have a, a three really powerful horses who, are, who can perform in a very high level, but if you are not coordinating them, they are not pointing to the same direction, you're gonna end up with bad results. But if you coordinate, for example, three donkeys, but they are all pulling to the same direction, probably you're gonna achieve better results uh, with uh, limited resources. Uh, this is what I, what, what I want to, to emphasize here, that uh, coordination is something that doesn't cost any money, but can change, it can have a big effect on the project because you can have the best resources, you can have the best engineers, the best uh, available materials and tools. Uh, if you are not coordinating it well, it's gonna be just a mess and it's not gonna be successful. But if you do a proper coordination, you make sure that each, uh, each part of the team, each resource, of, each resource of the team is going to serve, is, is going to the same direction and is serving the overall goal, then you're gonna achieve uh, good results even with limited resources. I know that in, in, in Russia, it's a problem that uh, I don't know certain exotic things are exotic materials are not available or there is not not available know-how in certain fields but uh, the coordination can make up the difference in this and this is very very important during the year as i said in the in the v model it's also there that you can have and you should have milestones you can have a concept freeze 
uh, by the time in the concept phase, you set up, okay, this is the, the parameters that we want to go with. And uh, in these concept freezes, in this concept freeze or later in the design freeze, when you are designing the certain parts, uh, this is a perfect opportunity to ask uh, for a review or evaluation at who should do this. Uh, you should ask uh, the faculty advisors and, uh, and the alumni members for this evaluation. I'm going to talk about this uh, a bit later. In the concept freeze, design freeze, for example, uh, it's not necessarily just one date that on December 21st or something, we finish with the whole design because it can happen that the that certain parts can be designed later. For example, most of the time, the chassis is the one, the monocoque chassis or the space frame chassis is the first one which has to go into production. So usually that is the one which has to be frozen the first, but in the design, that's usually the last to be designed. But for example, the, the housing of different uh, ECUs or mounting of it can be done later. But of course, you have to make sure that the, the mounting points in the chassis are finalized because the chassis is already in production. And uh, it's very important to do a proper documentation of all tasks during the year and not after the year. This is a, a very common mistake that often made that uh, we rush into the deadline, we rush with the design and we don't, uh, don't put a focus on the documentation and we say, okay, we're gonna do it later. Now we focus on the deadline. Now we focus on the, the manufacturing. Now we focus on the assembly of the car. No, you have to do the documentation throughout the year because if you postpone it, you're never gonna do it. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, this is something that I experienced in my team as well. As I said, uh, in, uh, there are different approaches in the, in the design. And what I would like to suggest for you is that uh, be as simple as you can and uh, reduce the complexity of the vehicle as much as you can. Just have the goal. What is the, what is the, the functionality of, the, of a certain system? What, what it must do to achieve the goal? Anything which is uh, more than that is unnecessary. The only thing that is necessary if, it's, if, if it serves the goal. So you don't need to have a, a really fancy steering wheel with a lot of functionalities and, and super nice screen if it's just distracting the driver because the driver is not gonna focus on the driving. For example, in, in I think a few years ago in Team Delft, the whole steering wheel was just a piece of, of wood cut out and it's, it's nothing fancy, but it serves the function perfectly. And it's a very lightweight, pro very lightweight product. You can also focus on this phenomenon called downsizing. Uh, it's based on that, that uh, if you have light components, if you have a light car, you're gonna achieve, you're gonna need less power to move it around because at the end of the day, you have a certain amount of mass that you have to move around in a certain trajectory. The mass is the vehicle and the trajectory is the track. And of course, if the mass is smaller, you're gonna need smaller forces. So for example, if you switch from a four cylinder engine, you switch to a one cylinder, probably you're gonna have uh, less power, but maybe your car will be 190 kilograms instead of 250. So you, I think it's, it's really important to, to focus on focus on this to make the car as light as possible and as simple as possible. Because if it's complex, it's gonna be heavy. If it's complex, it can go wrong. But if it's simple, if there are less functionalities, less things can go wrong. And uh, as you saw in the left time simulation, in the left time simulation, the, most of the parameters are vehicle dynamics parameters. So it's the vehicle dynamics which is the most important in the, in the performance of the car. So you, this is the, these are the forces which are carrying the, the certain amount of mass around the trajectory. And this is a way in the design that you design from the, from the tire 
upward and inward. So first you set up the wheelbase, first you set up the, the track, and then you design the, the suspension kinematics. Uh, and then in the end, as, as a result of the suspension kinematics, you have the points where the suspension is connected to the chassis. And then you can design the chassis that it supports these points. It can uh, counteract the forces uh, generated in these points. And uh, you can make sure the chassis does this function and nothing more. As, I, as it is written in the last row, the, the chassis and the packaging of the components, it's, uh, its most important goal is to be safe, be reliable, be simple, and it only has to fulfill its function. And the important thing that you have to focus on is the vehicle dynamics, uh, including the, the suspension parameters and including the aerodynamic performance. As I mentioned before, faculty advisors and uh, alumni member, members of the team who has left the team from before, this is very crucial because as I said, this is formula student. So there are new and new students coming every year who doesn't have the experience, didn't do it before. Uh, they don't know what, 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 is the, what were the experiences of the previous team members. And this is why it's quite important, very, very important to have, a, to have a good connection with the previous team members, to be ready to, to ask them, okay, uh, how did you design the suspension? Why did you design it that way? What were the problems that came up? What should I do to avoid these problems? How can I take your design? How can I improve it? How can I make it better? Of course, it's not blindly copying. You have to understand why it is designed that way. Why is it uh, going that way? And how can you make it even better than it was in the previous year? And if you have this connection with the, with the previous team members, and if you develop uh, your uh, subsystems based on this, uh, you're gonna get better over and over every single year after each other, and slowly you are converging to the direction that you would like to achieve. It's not like that, that you have to start from the beginning every single year, because one year of development can give you just a certain, you cannot, you, you cannot go on above a level in one year, you always, have to check what was the, the leftover of the previous team members who worked on this field and how can we, how can we do it better than that? Learning from the mistakes that they make. And this is where the, 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 the connection with the faculty advisors is really important as well because they can give this long-term stability. They can give this help to the students that you, the faculty advisors check the check the design, for example, in the concept phase, and they tell to the students that, okay, I see that you set that, uh, that uh, drag coefficient, and you set that uh, lift coefficient. I see it, but I think it's not achievable because in the previous year, a different guy uh, set this, and in the end, it was different results. So you have to have this, this external feedback, which uh, tells you that you are going in a good direction or not. And uh, this should be, this question should be asked over and over during the year and not just at the end of the year, but during the year as well, to see that you are on track to achieve the goals that you set or not. In the concept phase, in the end of the autumn, then in the end of the design phase, roughly in, in end, of this end of the winter or the beginning of, uh, of the spring, you have to track it throughout manufacturing and assembly, you have to check it all over the project from time to time. And this is where the experienced team members and faculty advisors are crucial. So it's really important to, to have a good connection with, with these members and they have to be involved in certain level of the project. But of course, it doesn't mean that the faculty advisor needs to be the, the team leader or the chief engineer. The faculty advisor needs to be an advisor, as it is said in the, in the title. And the alumni member also, they are not, uh, not the team, not necessarily the team leaders, but they are the ones who, who have been there before and who can help you, who can help the, the team leaders and the team members to go into the right direction. 
as we are getting ahead and uh, the parts are sent into production and uh, the, the assembly has started, this is the time when the, the delays are starting to accumulate. So the things that we, that we expected in the beginning, they didn't really work out in a way that we wanted. This is when you need to have these buffers and you need to be ready to adapt to the new situation. But please make sure, please try to be done with the design and assembly of the car as fast as possible and check all the subsystems before because it's really, really important to start the testing of the whole level, the, the, the full complete car. It's really important to start the testing of it as soon as possible because uh, as I said, the good coordination can make a, a limited or team with limited resources very successful. It's also the testing which can make a, a, a medium level car an excellent car because uh, if you are testing the car, if you are testing the different suspension and aero setup, you're gonna find uh, what, is the, the best, what is the best setup that gives you the best results. And of course, there will be differences compared to the simulation. You have to validate the simulations. You have to check, okay, what were the differences? Why these differences were there? And what is the actual best setup of the car that we achieve the best results with? And if you have long, long tests, you have a lot of test results, then you're gonna, you're gonna know how to set up the car in the competition and how to set up, how to reach the best results that you can with the with the car. And uh, another important thing with the testing is the reliability. If you are running with the car a lot, if it goes over and over and over, the things get, that can go wrong will go wrong during the testing. So maybe you're going to have a broken, broken PCB, maybe you're going to have a broken half shaft, maybe some suspension components will break. It's okay, it's no problem. You just need to check what was the problem, how we can fix it. And if you fix it and uh, make it ready for the competition, then it's not gonna break on the competition. If it breaks on the test, no problem. If it breaks on the competition, that's a big problem. So this is why testing is quite good to find the perfect setup and uh, find out the weak points of the car and what to do with them. Validation, as I mentioned, uh, we can do design, we can do simulation, but it's one thing what happens in the computer, what happens in the mathematics. As I said, there are a lot of parameters that we can change. It's another thing what happens in reality. Once you have the, the, the subsystems and the systems and the vehicle ready, check it, compare it to the simulation that you have. Is there a difference? Of course, probably there is a difference. It's not a problem if the different curves are not perfectly aligned. The problem is if you don't know what is the source of the difference and what you can do to, to eliminate the difference. Preparation of the static events. As I said, as the project goes ahead, uh, this and the documentation is often forgotten. Uh, this, this always happened. This is what happened in my team as well that we are, I don't know, three weeks before the competition and then the chief engineer comes, okay, right now we are really busy with testing, but you guys, you have to start to prepare for the static events. This is not how it works uh, because this leads to the point when you're gonna try to justify the decisions that you made throughout the year uh, with engineering decisions, but if you went according to the process that I said before, that you make your decisions in a way what they can uh, serve the overall goal and you document this process well, uh, only what you need to do for the static events is to take these documents, check, okay, that uh, we made this decision in the beginning of the year, then during the year we find out that this was a problem, then we refine the plan, went into this direction. And if you have this, all this well documented, you just have to take this, you just have to check it, and then you have to perform it to the, to the judge. The judges are, are not really searching for the, for the, 
the best design or, or, or perfect direction. They, they want to make sure that you, that you went through the process and learned. You had mistakes, you learned from your mistakes. This is, this is the, the, the way to go. And this is where the validation results come up as well. As design judges, we always search for validation because as I said, you can design, you can go blindly to a direction if you are not checking from time to time, if you are on the good track to the goal, then you're going to end up somewhere in completely different. I, I, can, uh, I can start to leave from Budapest to Moscow, but if I don't check the, my route on the way, I might end up in, I don't know, in Helsinki. <laughs> and uh, we didn't have enough money. This is, this is something that... Uh, that often misunderstood. Uh, it's, I think it's a common mistake uh, that uh, sometimes teams are trying to, to justify engineering decisions which were influenced by the lack of money. They try to explain that they did it because of, uh, because of uh, vehicle dynamics reason or, or or, or this or that. It's not a problem. Uh, what we say that we don't want to hear we didn't have enough money, this is not an excuse. But what you can say is that we had a certain amount of resources, certain amount of time, certain amount of know-how, and uh, we find that the best allocation of these resources to serve the overall goal was, was in a way that we decided that uh, we didn't go in this direction. For example, uh, in this year, I guess uh, most of you there are from Togliati team. I heard on the on the design event that we that you guys didn't do didn't prepare a, an aerodynamic package because based on vehicle dynamic simulation, you find that it's it's not bringing you the results. While most probably the reason why you didn't have that was that uh, there were a certain amount limited time available. Of course, COVID happens, these things are coming up. And if you explain it to the judge that, okay, uh, we found that we have to put our resources on the, on the chassis development and on the suspension development. And we had to, to work on the, on the, we had to put the, the resources of carbon manufacturing for the body instead of the aerodynamics. And because of these reasons, we decided not to have aerodynamic package. That is a justified explanation, a justified decision. And it's, it's not just an excuse that we didn't have money or it's not just a makeup, makeup justification in an engineering decision, which is not actually uh, the truth. How does the season end? If you, if you remember the how does the season start slide, it started the same way. At the end of the season, you have to check if you managed to achieve the, the goals that you wanted, uh, why or why not, what worked, and what are the things that could, uh, could uh, be improved. Probably or most likely there will be small, there will be certain differences compared to the goal and to the reality. And you have to check, okay, where did we make a wrong estimation? How can we make it differently in the next year to be closer to the goal than we have been in this year? And basically, these are cycles that you have to start all over again. And you have to check. You do an iteration throughout the year. You check where you want it to go. You check where you ended up with and what, can you, what, have to do, what you have to do differently to go, do it again and go into the to, to do different things and set up uh, and uh, reach the goal that you overall set for yourself. You can have these iteration loops throughout the years with these design gates like uh, the concept freeze, the design freeze, the, the vehicle level testing, and you can also have to have it in the end of the year if we achieve the overall goal or not, uh, why or why not, and what should we do differently to be closer to it the next year. This is, this is very important to, to learn what you do in the year, where you made mistakes, because I really believe that uh, if there is a team going to the, to the best direction and making the perfect decisions, they are not learning that much. 
you can learn much, much more if you make mistakes. Because if you make mistakes and you went to bad direction and you find out, okay, this was the time when we made the mistake which brought us to this situation. So in the next, next time when we come to this decision, we have to, have to think about this and not going to this direction. So I, I really believe that if you make mistakes, you're gonna, in the end, you're gonna be a better engineer. And this is what former student is for. So you make these mistakes in former student where you don't have a product which is manufactured in hundreds of thousands of units. You just have one car and you can make mistakes. There will be no, no big consequences like in the industry. This is the place where you can afford to, to make these mistakes. So when the situation is, is really important in, the, in a real, real work life situation, then you're not gonna make that mistake again. As I said, the whole point of former student is to learn from it and learn uh, what can go wrong and what do we have to do to, to prevent it to go wrong. Now I would like to summarize the, the thing that I talked about. As I said, it's really important to, to set up the clear measurable objective goals and throughout the year and at the end of the year, track if you manage to, to go to this direction and you manage to reach the goal that you set for yourself. It's very, very important to coordinate, to make sure that every single sub team, every single team member is going to the same direction. Every, everybody is pulling the, the carriage, which is the team. They are pulling into the same direction and we are going towards the overall goal. Gather a lot of information and use the resources, use the internet, use the English language, because if you search in the, in the literature in English, you have orders of magnitudes more resource than just uh, in Russian or, or other languages. So this is, this is giving you a, a, a big scope and a, and a big amount of information that you can process and understand, understand what you have to do with the, with in your design area, what you have to do, which will gonna serve the overall goal. What, what you have to do in the, in the wire harness design, which will make sure, or what you have to do in the aerodynamic design, which will make sure that you can move that, that mass around that trajectory as fast as possible. As I said, focus on the documentation in the, throughout the year, because if you leave it to the end of the season, you're not gonna have time for it. The end of the season is always a rush. You try to do as much test as possible and you try to, to prepare for the competition as much as possible. You're not gonna really have time to, to write the reports and you're not gonna remember in, uh, in May why you made that decision in uh, October. So this is really important to do this documentation along the development. So it's much easier to go back in the, in the end of the project and check, okay, where we have been at this point, where did we go? Did it work out the way that we expected or not? As I emphasized, don't be afraid to make mistakes. You can make mistakes. Former student is a place where you can make mistakes. You are doing it for the first time. You're gonna make mistakes. The only important thing is to learn from them. Learn what was the source of the mistake and how can you avoid it the next time? Keep, keep the, the contact with the, the other teams and as I said, the older team members. Uh, gather the knowledge from them, learn from them. What, how did they mistake? How did they make the mistakes? How can you avoid that mistake again? Because stepping into the same mistake over and over and over is not good. You have to, to take the knowledge that the the previous team members had and you have to learn their own mistakes as well. This is going to make you a better engineer to learn from the other's mistake and from your mistakes too. And uh, get in contact with other teams. As I said, in, in former student, it's not like in Formula One. It's not like that, that you are coming up with some development and you try to hide as much as possible from the other teams. In former student, the community is really open. Everybody is happy to talk about uh, how did they do a different design and they are ready to share their experience. 
and ready to share their knowledge. To be so, be open during the day you are racing in the track against each other. Most probably if something goes wrong, something breaks, the teams are helping with each other with spare parts or tools. And in the evening, you can gather, open a beer in the, in the campsite and talk with each other that, okay, we did this, we did that, we made this problem, we made that problem, we learned this. And if you talk with other team members, with other, other teams, international teams, you're going to learn from that as well. And it's all these will make you a better engineer in the end, which is the whole goal of the former student. And a few things to avoid. As I said, learn from the previous teams, learn from the previous uh, team members, and don't start from scratch again. Check what did we set in the previous year, what did we achieve in the previous year, how should we change our, uh, our goals this year, to be to get a better results and don't start from scratch because then you're going to make make the same mistakes over and over that the previous teams made as well you have to use the knowledge that the previous team members gathered and build on that learn from it build on it improve it as i said uh, focus on simplicity uh, don't develop fancy features which are doesn't contribute to the overall goal because they are unnecessary. All, the only thing which you need is uh, what's taking you closer to the, to, the, to the goal. Don't leave the static events, the preparation of the static events for the last minute because it's not going to be successful. Do it throughout the year, do the documentation. So if you do this documentation throughout the, the year, it's going to be a good source of knowledge transfer for the next team members and it's going to be very good for you just to take these papers uh, check them organize them revise them again and then present it to the to the static events don't skip the validation because if you skip the validation you're not going to see if you ended up in the way that you want it or not you're not going to be able to find out where it went wrong if you are not doing this validation first on the part level then on the subsystem level, then on the system level, then on the whole vehicle level. You have to check if each of these little components fulfilling their function or not. You have to validate if it, were, if it does what it needs to do or not. And if everything does the way as it should be, the whole car as together, it also should do the way that you expect it to do. Uh, I wrote down here that don't get overloaded, don't burn out and don't leave the team. Because as I said, it's really important to, to be there. If you, are, if you learned your lesson from formal student, you shouldn't just leave the team. You should be there for the new team members that are coming after you. Of course, then you don't need to, to put, I don't know, 100 hours a week into it or 60 hours doesn't matter but you have to be in contact with them you have to be ready when they want to ask question when they go to a certain level you should ask them okay guys where you are uh, you are going to the good direction or not and i guess as i heard it often happens that students are going in one direction they are not asking for the alumni members and faculty advisors they are just blindly going in one direction and uh, the alumni team members doesn't bother with it. And in the end, it's this kind of feedback and communication is not happening. It relies on both sides. So be ready to, to help each other and ask for help if, you are, if it's necessary. But don't, I said, be in the team and be close to the team uh, while you are there and after that as well. But don't stuck in the same position over and over. Uh, the whole point of former student, as I said, is learning. So you, have, you can try yourself in different positions. First, you are just in the workshop, uh, installing some parts, working on the assembly. You probably, you're gonna see a lot of mistakes that the development engineers made. You can learn from them. You can give them feedback that they did, did this wrong or did that wrong. And if you are changing these positions and going over the team, you can experience different fields. You can experience the, the marketing team. You can experience the, the suspension design. You can experience the chassis design. And in the end, you're going to find that 
okay, which is the way that I like the most, which is the way that I should go with my career. And the last one that I said is, we will prepare the documentation after the season. This is something that were often said in my team as well. I know it firsthand, but never happened. So don't think that, uh, that if you postpone the documentation, you're going to do it because if you skip it, you're not going to do it and you're not going to learn from it. These were the, the last point that I wanted to say. Thank you very much for your attention. Any questions? Thank you, Tamas. Just give us a minute. Okay. No problem. Uh, mm, okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you for the uh, election. So I would like to um, ask a, a question about newbies. Uh, what is the better way to include uh, newbies in the in the team in the teamwork? Uh, is, is it better to uh, give them uh, uh, hard tasks or uh, hard tasks immediately uh, when they were, go in the team or it will be better to uh, give, to, give, to give them uh, simple tasks in the, at the beginning so uh, how it uh, it's done in Europe? Can you expand me? Please? Well, there, there can be different approaches and uh, there are uh, different situations. For example, if you didn't have an aerodynamics team before and you want to establish an aerodynamics team, then of course you have to have to give the hard task for the new team members. But uh, in, in most general cases, I think it's... Uh, it's okay in both ways. So you can give them hard task to motivate them and, and to challenge them as well. But uh, be ready that if something goes wrong, it doesn't, uh, doesn't screw up the whole project. Or you can give them hard task, but make sure that uh, those guys who have experience in these fields from time to time, check them and give them feedback, uh, tracking them if they're going to the good direction. Um, and if you cannot provide this kind of uh, support for them, then it's probably better to, to give simple tasks and, for example, first send them to assembly because I really believe that uh, you can learn the most uh, when if you are assemble uh, the different parts of the car because most of the problems are popping up when you, start, when you try to, to put together the things which worked in CAD and then you're gonna to try to, to make it work in real life. And this is when you're gonna see that, okay, this went, went wrong. And if somebody is included in this process and see the testing of the car, see the assembly of the car, they're probably gonna learn a lot of, lot of mistakes and preferably the next time when they're, gonna, when they're gonna meet with this in the design side, they're not gonna make these mistakes. But yeah, as you can give them challenging tasks too, but if you give them the challenging tasks, provide them the, the necessary support as well. Provide them the connect that, okay, if you have question, ask the faculty advisor, ask the, this team member, ask that guy who left the team two years ago, contact to that guy to make sure that he gonna answer to this, introduce them to each other. You can organize, uh, you can organize meetings when they have to meet with each other because as I said, the guys who have left the team probably are busy with their, I don't know, final project or thesis or they are busy with the work they if they are not pushed to help the team members they're not gonna not gonna do it if the team member is uh, left alone they go in one direction and they think that it's gonna be good but if it's not checked if it's not tracked if they are going to the same if, if they're going to the good direction they're gonna be mistakes so in case of challenging task i think this is the way to go to to make sure that they get the, the sufficient help to perform that task. Okay, thank you for your opinion. No problem.
Hello. Uh, we have uh, experience with aerodynamics, uh, but uh, we haven't basic knowledge. Uh, what uh, do you advise uh, to read? Maybe some books or uh, some information? Ooh, the, the, what, what about is that book? Race, it's called Race Car Aerodynamics. And, uh, and who is Andre? Do you know maybe who is the author of that book? Uh, Robert Katz, may, uh, maybe. Maybe. I, I think I know this book. Uh, yeah, the surname is it's, Katz. It's yes, definitely, it's, but I'm not sure about the name of the uh, author. No. Okay. Thank you. Do, you. do you see this this picture now? Do you see my screen? I think this is this is that book. Joseph Katz, Race Car Aerodynamics. This is what uh, what I hear the most of the time. This is covering uh, the the back background knowledge, the basic knowledge. It covers the the real life uh, real life. Uh, situations what happens on the on the racetrack so this is a this is a very good book and for suspension design i think it's a uh, patsaika has b patsaika in the book let's say yes i did book tire and vehicle dynamics this is what they, they are editing and, and refining over and over. So I really recommend from for vehicle dynamics, I really recommend this, uh, these two books, the race car aerodynamics from uh, Katz and uh, tire and vehicle dynamics by uh, Patsaika. Okay, thank you. No problem. Ну вот у нас Леша наконец что-то сказал сам. Смелости набирался два дня. Ребят, кто еще смелее? Мы с вами когда планируем мотор вообще и машину, мы как бы вот часто задаемся вопросом, какая должна быть мощность мотора, нужна ли турбина или нет. Вы меня спрашиваете, вот спросите. Hi Thomas, uh, maybe maybe you remember me. I am uh, unhappy uh, faculty advisor of Toyota Racing Team. Yes, we met last year. <laughs> um, uh, my question: uh, What do you think? Uh, what should be uh, optimal balance between uh, uh, power engine and uh, weight of cars? Uh, what should be uh, uh, a power uh, engine um, for, for example, uh, 200 uh, kilo cars. Uh, uh, we are talking, uh, of, of course, we are talking uh, uh, about uh, CV class. Yes, yes. Well, uh, this is this is a question that I, I, I talk is, about uh, uh, power assembly. Yeah, I. I, I think that you ask something like that if it's it's better to go to uh, lighter but less powerful car or heavier but more powerful well uh, this is what the left time simulation is for so you can check that okay we have a one cylinder engine with a certain displacement with a certain power output and we have a four cylinder engine with a certain uh, certain power output certain performance and uh, you can include these uh, engines in the simulation, in the vehicle, di in the lap time simulation, uh, you can make estimations that, okay, this engine is this heavy, probably the chassis is a bit heavier to, to withstand it. If we go to this, we're gonna have bigger tire, we have to go to 13 inch wheel instead of 10. And uh, you have to go through this process and you, and in the end you're gonna see that uh, which, which of the engine will give you the, the better overall results. Of course, this is really complex. So it's really hard to tell that uh, if you have a four cylinder engine, you're gonna have a, a chassis which weighs uh, 
60 kilogram or 70 kilogram, it's really hard to estimate. But this is when the, the previous experiment comes into the game. You can see that, okay, in uh, 2019, we went with a four cylinder engine. The car ended up being uh, this heavy. Uh, and uh, we achieved, with these parameters, we achieved this goal. You can do some benchmarking. You can ask other teams. Uh, you can ask because, as I said, I think informal students, they are quite open. So they can give you information that, okay, uh, if you go to one cylinder engine, probably you can save uh, 10, 15 kilograms on the chassis or five more kilograms on the suspension because you're not going to need that, uh, that, that powerful, that thick rods. You're not going to need that big tire. And if you, if you do a proper benchmark, and you do the, the evaluation of your previous results, that will give you the information that what, what, which way that you should go. It's, it's, there is not like a really jolly joker because there are some teams which are going to this downsizing direction, uh, which is like, let's remove as much weight as possible. Let's make it as light as possible. And uh, then we're not gonna need that much power in the engine. But at the same time you have, for example, uh, Stuttgart, and, uh, and uh, Hawks Racing, and maybe Esslingen as well, I'm not completely sure. But uh, I know for, for, for sure in, uh, in Stuttgart that they are the best team and they are not going into this downsizing. They go to this uh, four-cylinder Yamaha engine and they refine it and they always, always go to this, let's have a bit more power. Uh, and for them, this setup works. They are most of the time, they are winning the competitions. They are leading the, the world ranking while they are not that light. So for them, this setup works. For other teams, another setup works. The different uh, perspectives, the different uh, situation can result in different optimal design. And I think there is not really a jolly joker. You should just uh, gather information and make the best possible decision based on the available information. And the next time you refine it again and you're gonna make an even better decision. I hope it answered the question. Yes, thank you. No problem, you're welcome. Okay, Thomas, so it seems like we have no more question and uh, the next lecture are waiting. Uh, so a big thank you to you. Thank I you appreciate your lectures and yeah, hope to see you the next year at our event. Yes, I hope so as well. I'm really waiting for it. <laughs> thank <laughs> you very much. It, I really enjoyed to present for you and thank you for the opportunity. And have a nice uh, education for the rest of the weekend. Thank you. I'll send you the oh, 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 your presentation uh, record uh, later, maybe uh, at the beginning of the next week. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So, bye. Thank you. Bye bye.